We are finishing up a series of messages today on false beliefs about God. And I want to reemphasize that in each of these erroneous beliefs, there is a kernel of truth. But we need to understand that God is above our understanding and that we do not attribute things to God, but that we listen to God's word to find out about who God is. <clears throat> it started a number of weeks ago when we looked at bodyguard God, and that was the view that the only job God has is to look out after you and me that bad things never happen to good people. And we know that that's false. We know that in our lives there are challenges. There is sickness. There is death. There is loss. There are disappointments. I, I often think, and I've shared with you, the song of the Gaithers. And again, I like the Gaithers. But there's one song that is biblically and theologically incorrect. I found happiness all the time. Wonderful peace of mind since I met the Lord. Now, I think we do find that peace. But I don't know about you, but I'm not happy all the time. There are challenges in our lives, and we don't want to set up a false view. Of God, And then we looked at on-demand God, that God exists in order to wait on us and to serve us. That whenever there is a need, whenever there is an issue, whenever there is a want or a desire, we just simply pray to God. And God is our cosmic butler. God is like Siri. Siri, turn up the temperature two degrees. Siri, play a Gaither song for me. And the, the truth is that we don't make demands of God. God makes demands of us. He created us, and we are his. And then we look at, don't leave your brain at the door, God. And that is, as we look at things, we don't look at them in such a way where we use our minds and our logic and our common sense. And then we look at all feeling God. That God is only present when I can feel him. And if we don't feel God's presence in worship, there's something wrong with me, or there's something wrong with the organist, there's something wrong with Pastor Rob, that somehow when I leave the service that I don't feel like I'm on cloud nine. And God is present with us whether we feel him or not. So we looked at the falsehood of the all-feeling God. Today we're going to look at two opposites. We're going to look at guilt God, and we're going to look at buddy God. Let's begin by looking at God's words from John chapter 8. But Jesus went to the Mount of Olives at dawn, and he appeared again courts, all the people around him, and he sat down to teach them. The teachers of the law and the Pharisees brought in a woman caught in adultery, and they made her stand before the group, and they said to Jesus, Teacher, this woman was caught in the act of adultery. And the law of Moses commanded us to stone such a woman. Now what do you say? They were using this question as a trap in order to have a basis for accusing him. But Jesus bent down and he started to write on the ground with his finger. And when they kept on questioning him, he straightened up and he said to them, let any one of you who is without sin be the first to throw a stone at her. And again, he stooped down and he wrote on the ground. At this, those who heard began to go away one at a time, the older ones first until only Jesus was left with the woman still standing there. Jesus straightened up and he asked her, Woman, where are they? Has no one condemned you? No one, sir, she said. Then neither do I condemn you, Jesus declared. 
Go now and leave your life of sin. So I've included this passage today because one of the things we're going to learn is that guilt God and buddy God are two extremes. And um, there's a slide that says that God meets us in the messy middle. And so one extreme view of God or the other extreme view of God is not an accurate whole picture of God. And so in this passage, I want you to see this very carefully, that there is grace by God. God's grace. I love that hymn. Grace, grace. God's grace. That there is grace in the words and in the mannerisms of Jesus. He's not standing over the lady pointing a finger saying, shame on you. But yet, on the other hand, he doesn't accept sin. He doesn't condone the sin. He says to her, go and sin no more. Go now and leave your life of sin. That perfect balance between guilt God and buddy God. Let's pray. Father, be with me now and be with us as we hear your word. Just truth in all things. In Christ, amen. Guilt God. And on the other extreme, God is my best buddy. So that's what we're looking at today. A reminder, all of us know John 3.16. God so what the world? He loved the world. Doesn't say God so hated the world. And so there are people and there are Christians who have this view that somehow God is always angry at us. And that everything that happens that's bad in our lives is a result of God's condemnation and his wrath. And you know, the Bible picks, uh, pictures a different God, a God who is a God of love. He deals with sin. The Old Testament, King James Version, there's a verse that says God does not wink at sin. He doesn't excuse sin, but God's grace overpowers. God so loved the world. Well, in the upper circle, you see a picture of a man. And somebody wrote, uh, uh, drew a caricature of that man. Now, a caricature is built on an exaggerated view, it's not built on accuracy. If you want a picture built 100% on accuracy, take a picture with your phone and you will get a 100% accurate picture of you are. But a character is something that's exaggerated, either somebody's ears or their nose or their mouth. And so as we look at guilt God and buddy, God, we need to understand that the views that some people take about God, that they are caricatures, they are extreme views that emphasize one certain part of God. There is some degree of truth in guilt God and in buddy guard God, but the truth but to take that truth and to exaggerate it and to be drawn to that particular area and to ignore the other side. Is it the whole truth about God? That's the question that we need to ask. Guilt God and buddy God are complete opposites. They're is on the one hand, the view that God is always looking over your shoulder, always looking around the corner, always watching you. And some of us as children, unfortunately, perhaps with good intentions by parents and grandparents and teachers, might have said something like, well, make sure you don't do this. God is watching you. God, God knows. Did you do your homework? Yes, I did. You better be telling the truth because God knows. And so God is used as a judge, used as one who looks at your life and my life 
looking to criticize us, judge us, and condemn us. And so people who go to one extreme or the other, as we're going to look at a couple of scenarios here of guilt God and buddy guard, buddy God guard, I have a hard time saying that. Um, they are completely opposites. And the truth is that if you were to talk to each person in each camp, they would have opposite views about a lot of different things in life, not only about God, but they would see things very much in a different way. Guilt God, buddy God. Neither extreme, but God meets us in the messy middle. And I think about the story of the woman caught in adultery. And I wonder, how would I have handled that? What would I have said? What would I have done? And of course, Jesus handles it perfectly. God's grace came into her life where he said, neither do I condemn you. There's God's grace, his friendship. But on the other hand, Jesus gives a command, leave your life of sin. Guilt God. Use God as always looking over your shoulder like someone at work or looking around the corner. I don't know about you, but when I do projects in my yard and I have a neighbor who's standing there watching, it makes me nervous. Or if I'm doing work on the computer Somebody comes over and they're just, just kind of standing there watching. And we have this picture that God is like that in our lives, and he's not. God, guilt God believes that God controls you by fear and by shame. Good morning. Hey, good morning, Pastor Rob. It's great to see you today. Well, it's good to see you. I have to say, it's been like two months since I've seen you here at church, and I hope everything is going okay. And and I'm just, you know, so what brings you to church today? Well, I'm glad I'm back to church. I'm telling you, I am so stressed out. Why? What's going on? Well, since I haven't been to church... Well, first of all, work is just stressing me out. And I thought, okay, I'm just going to take the weekends off, you know, that will right. help me refresh. But I just I feel so guilty. I feel like, like I'm being punished for not having been at church, even though I thought, because I've been so stressed at work, that not going to church over the weekend would let me refresh a little bit. But no, and you wouldn't believe the things that have been happening. What's been going on? What well, happened? Okay, for starters, I was having trouble with my computer, so not only my stress at work, but my computer's been acting up and I have to wait for IT, then I get even further behind. And then, since I work from home, I haven't been using my car, and I went to go start my car, and the battery was dead. Oh, uh, it's so frustrating. And it's pulled into the garage, so, you know, there's no cables that are going to be long enough to run around like that, and I'm like, that God's telling me something, and then, and then I got a drain backed up, and there's nothing worse than love. And I had to get the snake out, and I hate using the snake. And I'm like, okay, enough is enough. I know all these issues are only because I haven't been coming to church, and it's about time I get back here. Well, Paul, I'm glad that you're back at church. And boy, it sounds like you've had some really rough things going on in your life. It's, I know why. It's because I haven't been coming to church. It's, and it's, just, it's just, God is just watching, and these are messages. Well, let's think about that. Let's talk about that for a minute. So I, I know that in your home, that when you grew up, um, that you probably know many verses, but... Uh, what does John 3.16 say? For God so loved the world. So loved the yeah. world. Yeah, I just kind of float over that. God, listen, God <laughs> loves God loves you. Mm -hmm. And God is not the kind of God 
that his wrath and his anger are constantly coming upon us when things happen to us. You know, sometimes things happen to us as we've talked before because of mistakes that we make, you know, being human, you know, not charging the car or going out in it for a while. And, and uh, sometimes, sometimes God does get our attention. So we want to avoid extremes, Paul. One of the things I want to always do when I talk about God is to use the word always and never. So, for example, the things you're talking about, your stress at work and your computer, it's not biblically accurate to say that all of these things happen in our lives because of something we've done or have not done. That's not who God is. That's not how he relates to us. Now, having said that, one of the things we should always ask ourselves when we are encountering problems and issues, is there any unconfessed sin in my life? Because sometimes there is unconfessed sin in our lives and that causes spiritual problems and other problems. And so I don't want to ever say that when something bad happens to someone, that God never, ever is associated with that. Because I know sometimes God's got to get my attention. And sometimes the way he gets my attention is not very good. But generally speaking, God is not a God of anger and wrath. God is not a God of guilt. He's a God of love. He's a God of grace. And so we need to remember that in our lives. Thank you. You've given me a good perspective here. And I know that coming to church and reading God's word, praying and studying, will help me not have these extremes. Right. Uh, this happened always. This happened. No. Yeah. And you know, the writer of Hebrews says, do not forsake the assembling of yourselves, as is the habit of some, but that we gather together to encourage each other, to pray for each mm -hmm. other, to be a witness. You know, I bet your neighbors have noticed that your car has been in your driveway over the last couple of months on mm -hmm. Sunday morning. But, but this morning, I bet when they went out this morning, they saw your car, and I bet they thought, oh, Paul was probably in worship. So it's a witness, too, mm -hmm. right? We come to church to be a witness. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you for coming in today. You're welcome. Thanks for your... People who believe in guilt God believe at the very least that God is disappointed in them. And at the very worst, they believe that God is disgusted with them. We are all a work in project, in, in process. We're all at different places along the journey. Remember the bumper sticker years ago, please be patient with me. God isn't finished with me yet. And God isn't finished with you and with me. So the person who is guilt God, believes in a guilt God, here's their logic. God hates sin. Well, that's true. That is in the Bible. God hates sin. And then they say, you know what? There's a lot of sin in my life. You know? I often joke when Elaine talked about the pastor going a little bit late last week in her other church, I said, I resemble that remark. <laughs> so there's a lot of sin in my life. I resemble that. And so in my mind, I think God hates sin. I'm committing sins. Therefore, God must hate me. And that's our fallen, erroneous human logic. God hates sin, but he loves the sinner. God could have given up on humanity. He could have given up on you and me. But God's grace triumphs over God's condemnation of our sin.
maybe, just maybe, some of you may have been carrying guilt God along with you for a long time. Guilt God and buddy God are opposites. Who is buddy God? God is my best friend. God is my buddy. Now we sing, what a friend we have in Jesus. Remember, we're talking about a caricature. We're talking about something that is exaggerated. We're talking about people who sometimes cross the line of what is appropriate over what is not appropriate. Buddy God, person who believes in Buddy God, God never wants you to feel bad. And so if you don't go to church for a few months, you don't help somebody, you don't do something you should do, it's okay. God understands. God just wants you to be happy, don't you know? God would never in your life bring up shortcomings. God would never deal with you about your failures or your sin because that would be a bummer. And so God and I have this relationship where God understands, God understands, and the agenda is that God just wants you to be happy. Now listen, again, there's some truth in this. We're talking about kernels of truth. There are kernels of truth in that statement. God wants you to be happy. But it's not an Ill, irreverent, sacrilegious kind of, hey, God, how are you today? Um, we have to remember that we're dealing with the king of the universe. People who believe in buddy God, there is no agenda for God except affirming your agenda. The cool thing is that God always agrees with you. God likes the same people that you like. He dislikes the same people that you dislike. And don't you know that God votes the way you vote? And God shares all your feelings and your ambitions. Just this nice little cozy relationship, just God and me. Let's talk further about Buddy God. Hi, Barry. Good morning, Pastor. How are you? Hey, have a seat. Hey, I haven't... Uh, haven't uh, seen you in the last couple of months. We've missed you. So what's yeah, going well, on? My wife and I, we went out. We were out looking one time. We were up at the camper sales. And we decided we were going to buy a camper. And we're going to travel around a little bit. So that's what we've been doing. You know, we haven't been coming to church. But, you know, God understands. You know, we're like this. Uh, uh, we're tight. Got you know? it. He's, he's cool with it. So we're just we're just having a good time. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know, it, there is some truth, right? That you can worship God anywhere. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Yeah. yeah, but but I have a question. Do you? Well, we try to, but you know, God's cool with it. I think you know, he's, you know, like I say, we're tight. You know, he's, yeah, he's good with it. You know. Well, how about like uh, I'm really busy? How about studying God's word, like in your spiritual life? How is that going? Are you are you uh, studying God's word each day? And yeah, yeah, a little bit, and and things happen in life that you know. Like the other day, we was in traffic. Yeah. You know, I'm sitting in a red light, and the lady makes a left turn, and her car breaks down. Ah, so you you probably just stopped and helped her, didn't you? Well, everybody got cell phones now. They can call anybody. They can, you know, do anything they want. And, you know, everybody, there was a bunch of cars behind her. You know, surely somebody else was going to help her, you know. He understands if I didn't get out and help. You know, I had my good clothes on, and I didn't want to get all dirty or anything, you know. Yeah. Well, you know, I know in the past, years ago, you used to serve, like we have a number of teams in our church, worship team and property team and member care and fellowship. And so, you know, what do you think about maybe getting involved in one of those teams? Well, that, that would be okay. But, you know, I'm, I'm, like I said, 
say, I'm, I'm busy and I've been doing things and I keep in touch with Jerry to see what's going on with the property and stuff. You know, I understand what's going on and, you know, so it's okay with that. He understands. Yeah, sure. Okay. Thank you. Sound familiar? Do you, maybe some of you resemble that remark? So that's kind of the way Buddy God operates in the lives of people. That we want someone who understands us. God does not excuse your sin, however, and your failures. There's a drawing, Jesus loves you. And I think that for some Christians, we can have such a familiar relationship with God that it can cross the boundaries of sacredness and holiness. When we sometimes tell jokes that may not be appropriate about God, there's a line that we cross. My mom as a child used to use the word sacrilegious, but irreverent. We become too familiar with God and we take God's personality for granted in our lives. Friends, buddy God is not real. He's more of a therapeutic friend <clears throat> than a deity. Buddy God is following you rather than you following him. Buddy God never challenges you. I think that's why we like him so much. Because God understands. He never challenges us. He never changes us. We're never asked to change or to do anything differently in our lives. And so a question, if you are the center of things, who's actually God in your life and in mine? Guilt God and buddy God, buddy God are characters. They are not biblical. Guilt God is all about the rules. All about the rules. All truth and no grace. However, buddy God, it's all about grace. God's cool with everything in my life. God understands. It's all grace. There's no truth. And I think about going to a physician. And I think about the uh, physicians I've had in my life. And, and how I want that balance between truth and grace. Just don't want to hear all the bad news. You know, years ago, I, I shared this story. It's a true story. I went to a physician and he mentioned to me about my weight. And back in those days, my house in Ohio, I was hand mowing about an acre of property a week. And I said to the doctor, I said, you know, every week I go out, I said, I hand mow an acre of property. And he said to me, get another half an acre. So as we conclude and we talk about grace and truth, this balance in our lives, as we look at who God is and what he wants to do in our lives, we look at the story of the woman caught in adultery. What, what better, what better example for us to see God's grace in our lives and truth in our lives? God doesn't excuse or ignore her sin. The woman doesn't say to Jesus, Jesus, I'm sure you understand. If you don't understand, then your heavenly father, no, God understands. God doesn't excuse or ignore sin, but Jesus condemns the sin and loves the sinner. And my friends, that's the challenge that we have as we go out into the world, as we meet sinners, that we love them. But it, yet at the same time, we've got to tell them when there's something wrong. You know, we've, we've got to tell Pastor Rob that he needs another half an acre to walk. <laughs> That's the balance between the two. And so our job, as I conclude, is our obedience to God. That you and I, that the purpose that you and I have on earth is to be obedient and to be faithful to God. That is success. Faithful in our worship. Faithful in our helping with others. 
faithful in terms of how we minister the life of this church to one another. God's part is the acceptance part. God accepts us and he loves us. Let's pray. Father, thank you for bringing to our attention these two extremes. Lord, help us to understand that you are a God of truth, that you do have rules and regulations set forth in your word. And yet, O oh Lord, as, as much as you desire for us to follow rules, that you desire to bring grace into our lives, that unmerited favor. And so, Lord, we pray that you would help us in our lives, that we would be challenged by you, that we would be changed by you in Christ. Amen.